Hello guys, what's up? This is Sir EJ and welcome again to another math tutorial. In today's topic, we will be discussing introduction to chords, arcs, and angles of a circle. So let's have the following objectives in today's topic. At the end of the lesson, the students should be able to letter A, identify the chords, arcs, central angles, and inscribe angles of a circle. Letter B, name the chords, arcs, central angles, and inscribe angles of a circle. And letter C, value accumulated knowledge as means of new understanding. Let's have first the definition of circle. So when we say circle, circle is a set of all points which is equidistant from a given point called the center of the circle. So we can name a circle by its center. So in this case, the name of the circle is written in symbol of the circle which is this one followed by its center so this is read as circle c so these are the parts of the circle that we will be discussing in today's topic so we have the center and then after that we have the diameter and also the radius and we have the chord and then the arc and then the central angle and lastly, we have the inscribed angle. Let's have first the chord. A chord is a segment whose two endpoints are on the circle. So in this figure, we have four chords that is located on the circle. So we can name a chord using the two endpoints of the segment that is located on the circle. So for example, we have segment CB or segment BC. And then we have segment AB or segment BA. And then the next chord is segment DB or segment BB. And then the last chord that is located on the circle is segment FD or segment EF. So the next part of the circle is the diameter. So the diameter is the distance across the circle through its center. It is also known as the longest chord. So the name of the diameter in the circle is segment EJ, this one, or segment JE, this one, which passes through the center of the circle, which is point B. So let's have the next part of the circle, which is the radius. So the radius is the distance from the center to any point on the circle. So it is also one half the measure of the diameter. So the name of the radius here is segment EJ or segment JP. As you can see, one endpoint is located on the center of the circle, which is point P, and the other endpoint is on the circle, which is point J. Let's try to answer the following exercises. So use circle T to determine whether each statement is true or false. Number one segment RT is a diameter. So we have here segment RT. So this is not a diameter because it does not passes on the center of the circle but instead it is just a chord. So the answer for number one is false. Next number two, segment PS is a radius. So segment PS is this segment. So one endpoint is on the center of the circle, which is point P, and the other endpoint is on the circle, which is point S. Therefore, segment PS is a radius. So the answer is two. Next, number three, segment QT is a chord. So segment QT is located here. So we have segment QT. So this is a diameter because it passes on the center of the circle. So since diameter is also known as the longest chord 
on the circle. So therefore, the answer for number 3 is true. So let's have an example. In the following figure, identify the chords, the di and the diameters. So we have here given circle O. So let's identify first the chords. So we have the first chord, which is segment AB or segment BA. So this one is the chord AB or chord BA. So the second chord is we have segment CE or segment EC. So this one is the second chord, chord CE or chord EC. And then the third chord, we have segment BF or segment FB. And then after that, we have the following radii. So radii is a line segment whose one endpoint is on the circle and the other endpoint is on the center of the circle. So we have segment OB or segment BO. We have segment OF or segment FO. And then the third radii or radius is segment OD or segment BO. And then let's have the diameter. So the diameter is the longest chord in which it passes on the center of the circle. So we have the diameter BF or the diameter FB. So let's have the next part of the circle, which is the arc. Arc is a part of a circle which is located between the two points on the circle. So in this case, we have arc XY. So we have three types of arcs. So the first one is the minor arc. And then to name a minor arc, we use two letters. So in this case, the name of the arc is arc AB. So this symbol followed by letter A and B. And then the next one is the major arc, which measures greater than 180 degrees. So to name a major arc, we use three letters. So in this case, the name of this arc is arc ACD or arc BCA. So this symbol followed by the letters. So the third type of arc is the semicircle wherein it is an arc that equals 180 degrees. So it is one half the measure of the circle. So to name a semicircle, we use three letters. So in this case, the name of the semicircle here is arc E, D, F, or arc F, D, E. So let's try to identify the minor arcs, major arcs, and the semicircle in circle O. So we have the given figure. So let's try to identify the minor arcs. So remember, minor arcs are arcs which measures less than 180 degrees. So meaning to say, we will look at arcs which is not greater than a semicircle or half circle. So in this case, we have here arc AC, which is not greater than 180 degrees or semicircle. So we have here arc CE, which is also not greater than 180 degrees. We have also arc DE, this one, arc DE, which is also not greater than 180 degrees. And the last minor arc is arc DE or arc AD, which is also not greater than 180 degrees. And the next, let's have the major arc. So remember, the major arcs are arcs which is greater than 180 degrees. So meaning to say, it will exceed the measure of a semicircle or half circle. So in this case, the first major arc here is arc A, C, D. So this arc. And then the second major arc, we have arc A, D, C, which measures greater than a semicircle or 180 degrees. And then we have arc E, D, C. So this arc, so arc E, D, C. And then we have arc E, C, D. So this arc, which is greater than 180 degrees. And then also we have arc D, A, E. So let's have the next major arc, which is arc D, E, A, which is greater than 180 degrees. And then the next major arc is arc C, 
DA, which is also greater than a semicircle or 180 degrees. And then the last one is arc CAE, which is also greater than 180 degrees. And then let's have the semicircle, which is equal to 180 degrees. So the first semicircle is arc DAC, which is half a circle. And then also we have arc CED, which is also half a circle. And then the third semicircle is arc ACE, which is also equal to 180 degrees. And then the last semicircle is arc ADE, which is also equal to 180 degrees. So these are the minor arcs, major arcs, and the semicircle of circle O. Let's have now the next part of the circle, which is the central angle. So central angle is an angle whose vertex is on the center of the circle and whose sides are radii or radius of the circle. So in this case, the center of the circle, which is point P, e, is also the vertex of the central angle, which is angle APB. And then the two radii is radius AP and radius PB. So angle APB is the central angle of circle P. And then next, let's have the next type of the angle, which is the inscribed angle. So when we say inscribed angle, it is an angle whose vertex is on the circle and whose sides contains chords of the circle. So in this case, the inscribed angle here is angle ACD because the vertex of the angle is on the circle and it contains two chords which is chord AC and chord BC. Next, let's have the intercepted arc. So when we say intercepted arc, it is an arc that lies in the interior of an inscribed angle or central angle and has endpoints on the angle. So in this figure, the intercepted arc of angle APB, which is a central angle, and angle ACB, which is an inscribed angle, is arc AB, this arc. So this one will be the intercepted arc. Let's try to answer the following. In the following figure, identify the inscribed angle, the central angle, together with its intercepted arc. So let's have first the central angle. So when we say central angle, it is an angle whose vertex is on the center of the circle. So meaning to say the vertex must be point A. So the first central angle is angle B A M, this one. So as you can see, the vertex is on the center of the circle and it contains two radii, which is segment BA or segment AM. So the intercepted arc of angle BAM is arc BM, this part. The next, another central angle is angle YAM, which the vertex is point A, which is the center of the circle, and again, it has two radii, which is segment AY and segment AM. The intercepted arc of angle YAM is arc YM. And then we have the inscribed angle, which is the vertex is on the circle, and it contains two chords of a circle. So we have angle B x e as an inscribed angle because the vertex is on the circle we have point x which is on the circle and the two chords is chord x b and chord x e so the intercepted arc of angle b x e is arc b e and then let's have another inscribed angle which is angle x b y so 
the vertex is on the circle which is point P and it has two chords which is chord XB and chord YB and then the intersected arc of angle XBY is arc XY and then let's have the next inscribed angle which is angle XEC wherein the vertex is on the circle which is point P e, and it contains two chords which is chord XE and chord CE so the intercepted arc of angle XEC is arc XE